Today we're gonna see a guy who rivals the I ain't even shoot though guy for most ridiculous response to a police involved shooting. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from right here, Phoenix, Arizona. Several neighbors have called 911 because there is a, uh, a man who is brandishing a firearm, pointing it at people, threatening people with it in the neighborhood, waving it around in the air. Several 911 calls have come in. These officers are the first to respond to that and find a guy matching the description exactly of who they say is pointing a gun at people. Let's listen in on the cameras. Grab the gun, dude. No, I did it. I ran. Let go. I did Let go. It. Slowing it down here, you can see the guy pulling a gun out of his left pocket. You can see it in his left hand here. And uh, that's what the officer decided to shoot him for. We'll be able to see that in the analysis. Guy's gun actually looks like an off brand, not a Glock. What you can see at the bottom, a, a wish.com giggle switch on it. That's a full auto switch on that Glock. He was already at 17 years old, a prohibited possessor. Uh, that's gonna continue for some time. He did actually live through this and is facing significant charges. I really think this is a value of badge camps because you had to really slow it down to see it. But when you do, hey, this guy was a danger to the community for sure. You know, you got a call, man pointing a gun, threatening with people, waving it around in the neighborhood. And I get it, these officers wanna get these guys in custody. You can see them right here. And, and I think they kind of sort of tried, but it might have been a better idea, in my opinion, to, to pull this one as a felony stop and maybe stop even a little further back. I don't know though, Mike, I think it's kind of one of those things of how far back, because that gives them a chance to run versus how much do you pressure, and that compresses our discretionary time. It is a tough call to be sure, and here's why. Because these cops have been around the block a few times, they might have interacted with these guys before, who knows. But I'm, if this is me pulling up to this, I, I know they're going to run. I have a 100% certainty they're going to run. So how close do I want to be or not be? You have to, you have to balance that with the idea that, well, they're armed or they're, or they're supposed to be armed. So how much distance do I want to give myself? Do I want to set up, you know, uh, 30, 40 yards away and bust out a long gun? There's lots of options. Um, so I'm not going to question why they did what they did or, or how they did it. But I, there's, an, there's an argument to be made for... Uh, if you spot them, uh, drive right by and wait for more units and get a perimeter set up before you even start. There's a lot of other options, but uh, you know they did what they did in the moment. I wasn't there, so I won't second guess them. Um, but I, I do like the idea of maybe giving yourself a little bit more room because you got criminals who aren't good at shooting, hopefully, and you give yourself an advantage, especially if you break out a long gun. And you notice here that our passenger officer who did the shooting has his gun out and in his hand. Now, if you follow the channel for a while, you know I'm not a fan of this because... Uh, we see negligent discharges happen. We see problems happen, and we've seen several of them on the channel. This might be one of the few times, again, as you are getting ready to get out of the car and do a felony stop that you draw as you're opening the door. But you better be careful here. Hear me, officers, because what we see all the time is, number one, you muzzle yourself with your uh, non-dominant hand going to open the door. Number two, you have sympathetic discharges, and, and those can really get you in trouble. So just recognize if you're doing this, the danger has gone way up and you better be real aware of your muzzle and your trigger finger. So for those who don't know what John means when he says sympathetic trigger pull, uh, you're in a dynamic environment, you're in a moving car, um, you could perhaps stumble getting out of the car or reach up with your non-dominant hand to grab the door to help yourself out. And when you do that, your other hand tends to want to mimic that or sympathetic reaction to want to do the same thing the other hand is doing, which in this case could mean discharging your gun when you didn't intend to, which results in a negligent discharge. If you're going to do this, and I don't recommend that you do it very often, if you're going to do this, you have to be so hyper aware 
aware of what your gun hand is doing and what your trigger finger is doing. And you need to have supreme confidence that you've practiced enough that your finger is going to stay way up high above above the trigger guard, excuse me, above the, uh, the trigger assembly, and you're going to do it safely. But it does require a lot of concentration to ensure you don't have a problem like John uh, indicated earlier. Has to be conscious. You got to just really consciously say, finger is at home. I'm very aware of my muzzle, those kinds of things. Now, dude piles out and some folks are gonna ask, now wait a minute, he's just kinda, he doesn't have the gun pointed at the officers or whatever. For what, what the officer is seeing here, this guy who matches the description of a suspect who is pointing a gun at people, threatening them with a gun, that's aggravated assault, is now running either towards the officer or into the neighborhood and drawing a gun. You can see it here in his left hand. This is where the officer makes the decision to shoot. Is this justified for him to shoot this guy? Even if the guy is running off into the community, I think under the standard of Tennessee versus Garner, which requires objective, reasonable evidence that the perp is a threat of death or great bodily harm to the officer or to the community, I think the answer to that is absolutely in this particular case. And so does this guy need to be shot? Yes, and a warning to all felons who might watch the channel, people who might have nefarious intent, a great way we see felons get shot by the cops is drawing a gun in their presence. And so if the gun's in your pocket, leave it there, homie. The, the officer has no way to know what this young man's intentions are. He has no way of knowing if he's planning on dropping that gun, running off with it, or turning his left arm. It would take him less than a second to turn, the, turn his body and arm and shoot at the officer. He can't wait for that to happen. You know, pe people like to comment that it's funny when, when John or I tell, you know, prospective criminals or felons out in the world hey uh don't don't drop your gun just how about this just sit there and cooperate and keep your hands where they can be seen and you're going to go to jail you're 17 you're looking at probably six months in juvie or maybe a year in adult big boy jail or whatever either one of those things is far preferable to getting a bullet in your side right uh because as we see in the video this guy got suddenly got very emotional all of a sudden when he had an extra hole in him so listen if you're if you're a bad guy when the police show up you know here are my hands, you know, no, no threat for me, nothing like that. Cause you have to understand the officer doesn't know if you're ditching the gun, if you're planning on running away with the gun, or if you're going to turn and shoot him. And that's what going through this officer's mind. And I think what John said earlier about they are, they had already had information that this is what was going on. They're in the neighborhood. They're threatening people. They're waving the gun around. They're doing whatever they're doing. That is in my, in my opinion, a critical part of the decision-making process this officer probably went through before he did pull the trigger. And this is especially true in Phoenix. Yo, if you go look at the, the numbers, my hometown team, they shoot a high number of people for the size of town that we have. They don't mess around in Phoenix. So listen, just surrender. Or at the very least, if you're gonna run off, don't grab the gun. Now watch what happens here. I've slowed it way down. You can see here that this guy is tossing the gun and you can see the gun going. But remember, the officer's already made the decision. It takes, once the decision's made, it takes time for his brain to process that, program the motor skill, and press the trigger for that action to happen. And that's exactly why that took time. That's also exactly why people get shot in the back. So this is a justified instance of shooting someone in the back. I have no problem with it. And I also got to say, Mike, I, I, I laughed a little bit, and that maybe may, may sound insensitive to some people, when he started whining immediately afterwards, but getting shot in the lungs has got to be ridiculously painful. Uh, but, you know, as we've said many times, this dude paid the band, so, you know, he gets to dance to the song. All he can hope for is that uh, the people he ends up in jail with don't see this video because he would be mercilessly ridiculed by other criminals for the uh, level of emotion that he suddenly uh, achieved after being after being shot. I know people that have been shot. I've talked to them, uh, officers and, and non-officers that have been shot. It is evidently, you know, once the adrenaline wears off, especially extremely painful, no matter where it is, even a through and through round. It's a it's a terrible burning sensation. I can't even imagine getting shot through, you know, through your through your lung and through maybe a vital organ or whatever it's got to be extremely painful but hey as john said you put the quarter in the jukebox you selected the song this is a song you wanted to dance to you got to dance to the whole thing that's just all there is to it and listen uh, his emotions afterwards i think uh, you know if you've been a fan of the channel for a little while not too long ago we had a guy out of houston that had the i ain't even shoot though award so so this guy i ain't even do nothing i think i i think actually uh you know it gives him a run for his money for whiniest a uh, guy who got shot in uh, on the channel. I think that these guys were clearly justified. I think these officers did a really fine job. Again, I know Phoenix PD has been under a lot of scrutiny from DOJ and there's been some challenges and not everything has been perfect, 
But I gotta tell you, man, we do a lot of badge cams from Phoenix PD here, Mike, and I think they do a pretty good job when it actually comes time to go get down. I think they did here and covered their ASP.